What if a rich heiress, spending money like water, with a fortune worth billions, lavishly throwing extravagant parties, turned out to be a con artist? It wouldn't be surprising, as many people nowadays are willing to do anything to polish their image and elevate their self-esteem in the eyes of others. But today's story is not just about that. This protagonist didn't just fool a few people, the number of victims is astonishing. People of their caliber, usually intelligent and sophisticated enough to navigate life's traps and betrayals, couldn't escape the manipulative hands of the Queen of Deceit, Anna Delvey. So, what lies behind this facade of perfection? How could one girl manipulate the entire world around her so skillfully? Let's dive into this thrilling tale. Anna Delvey, an Instagram influencer with nearly 70,000 followers, on February 18, 2017, at the bustling Howard District in New York, at the Howard Hotel's reception desk, took out a $100 bill and handed it to the bellhop. Neff, as she was nicknamed, wore dark glasses, her upper lip curled slightly, and her disheveled red hair, with a European accent, asked what the best food in the Howard District was. Although the hotel's clientele were powerful and wealthy, tipping $100 right off the bat overwhelmed Neff, who was accustomed to rich guests. Moreover, what Neff didn't expect was that this young girl named Anna wanted to stay in the hotel for a month. She booked a room costing about $400 a night, with windows overlooking the luxury brands of the Howard District. Typically, only the extremely wealthy could afford to stay in such a hotel for that long. In the following month, Neff always saw Anna paying for everything in cash. According to information, she was from Germany, her father owned a solar panel manufacturing company, and she was the heir to the entire family fortune. Not only that, but Anna also had a trust fund worth $60 million, which she couldn't access until she turned 26. Though it sounded strange, Neff completely trusted her because Anna's spending was indeed lavish. Whether it was Uber drivers, restaurant receptionists, or room service staff, they all received hundreds of dollars in tips from her. Bellhops competed to carry her luggage upstairs, even fighting over it, as she would tip $100, equivalent to a day's average wage for a hotel employee in New York. Inside her room were piles of shopping bags from famous brands, with many luxury items still in their boxes, untouched. Moreover, Anna was very kind to Neff, even inviting her for foot massages and manicures, and taking her to personal training sessions. When they went to work out together, Neff saw Anna comfortably withdraw $4,000 in cash, more than 110 million Vietnamese dong, to pay for a training package with a trainer who worked with America's top stars. Anna also liked to host dinner parties at the hotel's luxurious restaurant, attended by artists, athletes, and even top CEOs. Once, Neff was invited to a dinner party with Anna, where she introduced Neff to Home Alone star Macaulay Culkin, among numerous other well-known actors and singers. This made Anna's image even more impressive in Neff's eyes. Anna was wealthy, living in a luxury hotel, spending money freely and generously, hosting dinner parties, and knowing famous stars. Anna had all the characteristics of an upper-class lady. Besides Neff, another person who believed in Anna's aristocratic exterior was the photo editor of a prestigious magazine, Rachel Deloach Williams. Rachel met Anna at a party, and in an interview, she said that Anna, wearing Gucci sandals and Celine sunglasses, had stepped into her life in a captivating way. They became inseparable best friends, often going to beauty treatments, hiring personal trainers, and dining at upscale hotel restaurants, with all expenses voluntarily covered by Anna. Shortly after, Anna invited Rachel to join her on a six-day vacation in Marrakesh, Morocco. Rachel happily agreed. They stayed in a luxurious villa with a private pool and butler. They had $400 manicures, $800 spa treatments, drank imported French wine, and the most expensive champagne. Anna even hired a helicopter to pick them up from Casablanca Airport and take them back. Rachel enjoyed the wealthy lifestyle of her best friend, a life she never imagined as a normal magazine editor before meeting Anna. But Rachel's world came crashing down when, at the end of the trip, Anna's credit card couldn't cover the bill. She convinced Rachel to pay up front, promising to reimburse her upon returning to New York. In this situation, Rachel had no choice but to grit her teeth and pay the $62,000 bill, more than a year's salary for her as an editor. However, after returning to New York, Anna didn't fulfill her promise. When Rachel realized her aristocratic friend couldn't repay the money, she had no choice but to report it to the police. Meanwhile, Anna had no time to deal with this minor lawsuit because she was executing a grander scheme. At that time, Anna was planning to open an art club in New York named after herself, the Anna Delvey Club. At some dinner party, she met a famous Spanish architect, Gabriel Calatrava, the son of Santiago Calatrava, and had her picture taken with him. 
She used this photo to tell everyone that the Calatrava family had rented a historic, prestigious church for her at the Vatican for her art club, with a space of over 13,000 square meters. She then showed a photo with other artists, claiming they would provide artwork for the club's exhibitions and equipment. These photos were actually ones she had collected over the years, taken at various parties she attended and posted on her Instagram. Often, she received many likes for pictures taken with big artists, although most were meeting for the first time, but these photos served as a solid testament to her high status in New York's social scene at the time. There were many speculations about Anna's identity. Some said her father was an oil tycoon, others said her father was a diplomat stationed in Russia, and some claimed her family owned a large antique corporation in Germany. However, whenever there was a conversation about her origins, Anna always smiled mysteriously to secure a large loan to run the art club. In fact, a financial friend of Anna's helped her contact Joe Cohen, a well-known figure on Wall Street, a verifier in the Jordan Belfort case. Thanks to Joe Cohen, Anna established contacts with several major financial institutions, including the Los Angeles headquarters of City National Bank and Castle Investment Corporation. Anna assured the bank that she had an account worth $67 million abroad, thus providing fake Swiss bank documents. She even produced a Photoshop computer screenshot showing a $20 million account balance. When everything seemed to be going smoothly, Anna fell into big trouble as mentioned at the beginning of the story. The HW hotel manager discovered that since Anna moved in, she hadn't paid any expenses. At that point, her debt had accumulated to $30,000, equivalent to over 700 million Vietnamese dong. This wasn't a small amount. The hotel staff changed the lock code on Anna's door and placed her belongings in storage. And at this time, Anna was on vacation in Omaha. She told the hotel service staff that she was meeting Warren Buffet with Bill Gates. After the meeting, she would return and pay the bill. She even sent photos of herself to Neff as proof. However, the truth was that while she was touring the facility, she happened to discover Warren Buffet in the VIP section of a private dinner party, then sneaked in and took pictures. Perhaps the photos from the Omaha party did the trick. Shortly after, Citibank, on behalf of Anna, transferred $30,000 to HW Hotel to cover her bill. Anna also convinced City National Bank's banker, Ryan Selim, to allow her to exceed her account limit, successfully obtaining a $100,000 loan. On June 10, 2017, Anna used the $100,000 loan to rent a silver Tesla to arrive at HW Hotel's front door. The car door slowly opened, Anna stepped out. She was still wearing large sunglasses and expressed her displeasure to the hotel manager about moving her luggage. Anna then moved into the Pigman Hotel in downtown. But at the Pigman Hotel, after nearly 20 days of staying, they didn't receive payment as promised. Anna was locked out of her room, and her belongings were confiscated. Anna then moved to another hotel for two days and was also kicked out similarly. On July 7, 2017, the bank denied her loan request. At this time, Anna was wandering the streets. She was wearing old but expensive sportswear, becoming homeless. Anna was from Germany, her real name was Anna Sorokin. Not only was her heiress identity fake, but even her name and nationality were fabricated. The young woman standing before the prosecutor was astonishing, beyond belief. The reason for Anna's arrest was due to her lies and large unpaid bills. Anna Sorokin was born in 1991 in an ordinary family in Russia. In 2007, she moved to Germany with her parents, settling in a small town. Shortly after, Anna dropped out of school. Of course, Anna's father wasn't a wealthy man but a truck driver. Although the family's financial situation wasn't great, in 2011, after Anna graduated high school, her parents still scraped together money to support her studying art at the Catholic Center St. Martin in London. Anna went alone to Paris. There, she achieved her dream of interning at Purple Magazine. And it was at this time that Anna came into contact with the extravagant aristocratic society. Gradually, she was fascinated by this world full of money and fame. She changed her name to Anna Delvey, starting her transformation. Her parents didn't know anything until she was arrested. They had no idea that Anna's internship had ended and that their daughter had no stable job. After eight months of moving to New York, Anna tried to find a job at several companies but failed. Seeing her friends living an extravagant life, she wanted to as well. Gradually, Anna devised a scheme to trick the wealthy into thinking she was a European heiress. First, she would move into the hotel and promise to pay the bill later. Then, she used her reputation to pay with another hotel and pay the previous debt. This trick was called the scheme in a self-sustaining circle. By creating one bill and paying with another, Anna was able to circulate debts without anyone realizing. 
This lasted for more than a year, deceiving everyone around her, from wealthy friends to hotels and banks. To maintain this lifestyle, Anna faked bank documents, statements, and even manipulated people. In 2017, her scheme started to unravel when her fake documents were discovered, leading to her arrest. Eventually, Anna was sentenced to 4 to 12 years in prison for multiple counts of theft and grand larceny. After serving her sentence, she was deported back to Germany. Anna's story is a cautionary tale about the lengths people will go to chase a dream and the consequences of living a life built on lies. Despite her attempts to deceive everyone, the truth eventually caught up with her, serving as a reminder that honesty is always the best policy. However, Anna Sorokin was released from prison due to good behavior but remained under house arrest in a 470-square-meter apartment in Manhattan, New York, under the supervision of the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE. To receive house arrest as her punishment, Anna had to post a $10,000 bail and was prohibited from using social media during this period. Given her infamous background as a grand con artist, Anna Sorokin quickly made a comeback and received significant attention from the public and the entertainment industry. Upon her release, Anna immediately received $320,000 when her con story was adapted by Netflix into the hit series Inventing Anna. Nearly a year after her release, despite having a substantial amount of money, Anna continued to draw attention with various activities. The heiress frequently appeared in stylish, high-fashion outfits. She engaged in numerous ventures such as buying and selling artworks, producing podcasts, and reality TV series, earning substantial sums, turning her into a real millionaire. Specifically, in January 2023, it was reported that Anna was preparing to film a reality show titled Delvey Dinner Club. The show was to be filmed inside her East Village apartment where she was under house arrest, produced by Courtney White's Bonart Production Company. Additionally, during this time, Anna launched a new podcast called The Anna Delvey Show to refresh her public image. She also participated in several art exhibitions featuring 33 pieces inspired by her own experiences. According to the New York Times, each of the five pencil drawings sold for up to $10,000. While she succeeded in rebranding herself to some extent, Anna showed no signs of stopping. One year after her release, it is evident that Anna is working hard to erase her con artist image and leverage her story as a stepping stone into the fashion and art world under her real identity. What do you think about this girl? The next case, not as famous as Anna Sorokin, but equally thrilling let's dive into another fascinating case involving a woman who manipulated the elite. In 2018, at one of the most luxurious hotels in Hanoi, Vietnam, a dream wedding took place. The bride, Tina Duong, in a magnificent puffy wedding dress, held a bouquet in one hand and her father's hand in the other, receiving admiration and blessings from everyone. She walked down the aisle with the groom. But in September 2020, this father unexpectedly revealed to the media that he was not Tina's real father. He claimed he was merely an actor among 300 people hired by Tina for this elaborate wedding charade. Even after the wedding, the actors continued their roles to maintain the illusion. However, as Tina failed to pay them as promised, he decided to expose the truth about this heiress. Besides staging her family, Tina borrowed and scammed her husband's family out of 17 billion VND before and after the wedding. Known by various aliases and the nickname Anna Back John, after Anna Sorokin, Tina's true identity in the elaborate scam gradually came to light. Who is Tina, really, and how did she manage to deceive her husband's entire family and all the wedding guests? You're following the case of Anna Back John, who hired 300 people for a fake wedding to swindle tens of billions of VND, on the channel True Crime Stories. If you find this story impressive, don't hesitate to leave a like to encourage us. If this is your first time here, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the most classic cases. Tina met her husband through the owner of a spa in Hanoi, who was also his cousin. As a VIP customer, Tina was always the center of attention, flaunting the latest fashion bags, custom-made high-end clothes, and a collection of luxury cars like Mercedes-Benz and BMW. After each beauty treatment, Tina tipped generously and often treated the staff to meals at expensive restaurants. During conversations, Tina portrayed herself as indifferent to money, embodying the persona of a wealthy heiress. The spa owner adored this rich kid and introduced Tina to her cousin. They quickly began dating, and Tina lavished her boyfriend with expensive gifts like luxury watches and designer bags. She also invited his family to visit her lavish home, claiming her father, a discreet but wealthy tycoon, gifted it to her. Months passed, and the couple's relationship deepened, leading to talks of marriage. Curiously, Tina began borrowing money from the spa staff, giving the excuse of forgetting her credit card while shopping. Her fiancé and his younger brother also lent her money, 
but Tina's borrowing escalated without any repayment. On December 31st, at the ultra-luxurious five-star Marius Hotel in Hanoi, their wedding took place. Immediately after the wedding, Tina proposed selling her father's real estate in Vinhome's smart city at a significant discount. Convinced by the cheap offer, her husband's family agreed to buy. Tina's home became a transaction hub, where she invited two brokers and notary office staff for formalities. Despite the low price-raising suspicions, the family received land ownership documents, seemingly genuine. However, when Tina borrowed 1 billion VND from her husband's aunt for medical treatment, the aunt began to investigate her niece-in-law. Tina then abruptly vanished. Disturbingly, all the real estate documents Tina provided were fake, and the brokers and notary staff were university students hired to play roles in a staged transaction. By the time Tina disappeared, she had swindled 17 billion VND from her husband's family. Despite vanishing, she remained active on social media. When the scandal broke, netizens discovered that in March 2021, Tina married another man in Dalat. The wedding photos showed a fairy tale scene with lavish decorations and vibrant flowers. Local newspapers reported that she disappeared a few weeks after this wedding, taking about 1 billion VND from her new husband. Her husband's aunt connected with over 40 victims, collectively scammed out of tens of billions of VND. Who is this con artist? Before being unmasked, Tina was known as a beautiful, fair-skinned heiress, always wearing designer clothes. Everyone believed she belonged to the super-rich, but no one knew the source of her wealth. Tina's father alternated between being a state official and a successful businessman. Regardless of her background, nobody questioned her finances until her layers of deception unraveled. Tina, whose real name is Nin T. Van An, was born in 1995 in Dao Mai Commune, Lang Zhang District, Bak Zhang Province. When she was 10, her parents divorced, plunging her into poverty. To escape reality, young Tina often ran away to temples or abandoned houses, only to be found and brought back home. At 14, she dropped out of school to find work in the city, but the harsh reality soon hit her. In her late teens, Tina married a man in Fudo, but they divorced two years later due to childlessness. She never mentioned this failed marriage to anyone. Afterward, Tina focused solely on becoming rich, caring only about money and the means to obtain it. She started mimicking the rich, buying fake luxury items, renting expensive houses, and cars to integrate into the upper class. Meticulous in building her persona, Tina continuously crafted elaborate stories and personalities, becoming well-known. She believed that one didn't need to be genuinely wealthy, it was enough for others to think so, ensuring respect and recognition. After Tina's fraud scandal, many people expressed sympathy for her, even suggesting that she exemplifies a group of young people who crave luxury and wealth but are lazy to work. How did Tina accomplish this? After meticulously constructing a false image through social media, Tina approached wealthy men using fake information and her emotional intelligence. She continuously gave expensive gifts to these men and their families, building trust. Once she entered a romantic relationship, Tina made her partners completely trust her, asking for extravagant items like real estate and shopping money, and persuading them to invest together, ultimately swindling a huge amount of money. To avoid being exposed, Tina never stayed with anyone for too long. She was always on the lookout for new prey. After the fairy tale wedding in Dalat, Tina continued to get married in February 2022. She met Hat, a 38-year-old man. One time, she said she was organizing a secret meeting for her father, a high-ranking government official, but for some reason, the meeting was cancelled. Tina borrowed 400 million VND from Hat to pay for the hall deposit. Later, on social media, a man claiming to be Tina's father contacted Hat, demanding 1.5 billion VND. Of course, this so-called father was also not real. During the investigation, Tina confirmed to the police that this amount of money was real. However, even a cunning person like Tina can sometimes fail. In August 2022, Tina met another target named C, the owner of a cafe in Ho Chi Minh City. At this time, Tina was posing as the daughter of a high-ranking Canadian government official. The heiress was beautiful and gentle, making it impossible for the man to take his eyes off her, but she was unfortunately in the final stages of cancer. Enchanted by her beauty and moved by her tragic fate, C quickly began a romantic relationship with Tina. However, C soon began to feel something strange about his girlfriend. Just two weeks into dating, Tina claimed she was kidnapped, causing C to panic with worry. But shortly after, Tina said she was rescued. After everything was over, Tina explained that her family was really wealthy and she was often threatened with kidnapping. Surprisingly, this story did not make C love her more but rather made him more suspicious. 
Furthermore, Tina continuously asked C for money to spend. C started losing trust in his girlfriend, so he suggested breaking up. But Tina did not want to end things like that, and she began sending continuous messages and calls, threatening to commit suicide to coerce C. A month after this toxic relationship ended, Tina had spent 90 million VND of C's money, mainly on shopping. Interestingly, Tina did not want to leave C because she had genuine feelings for him. Tina once posted on social media, perhaps the only sincere words she had ever written. Tina wrote, I want to tell the whole world that I love C. From now on, I will not love anyone else. I just want him to feel that I am excellent, I am perfect, I am very rich. Only then will he love me. When we were together, I lied many times, but my love for him is true. Tina said that for a year before they officially met, she had secretly followed C on social media. Tina was captivated by C's carefree appearance on social media. This was also the first time, after many deceitful acts, Tina truly wanted a serious relationship. However, in front of C, she unintentionally continued her role, playing the part of a terminally ill heiress. Perhaps it is true that once someone wears a mask for too long, they can never take it off. In October 2022, after failing in love, Tina rented a car in Ho Chi Minh City and drove to the north. She traveled a long distance of 1,500 kilometers, taking 26 hours to find a car dealership in Hanoi, where she sold the car for 450 million VND. Using forged documents to rent the car, the owner took a long time to track down Tina. Eventually, she was arrested for this case. Subsequently, 14 victims, including Hat and C, began to reveal secrets about Anna of Bak John, reporting her actions to the authorities. Finally, Tina's fraudulent career came to an end. When everything was revealed, Tina's family learned about her actions over the years. Tina's mother quit her job at a restaurant due to the shame of facing people's gazes. In an interview, the mother sat in their modest living room, sewing hats for companies. She lived with Tina's two younger brothers. She said that she kept sewing hats like this, it was the only way to keep herself from thinking too much. During her bail period, Tina often live-streamed on social media. She said she had reflected and thought about her mistakes, sharing some of her personal romantic experiences. She claimed that everything she did had deep roots in her hard childhood. She used a seat to cover her misfortune. Her stories truly touched the online community. A YouTuber, emphasizing to his 90,000 followers, expressed belief that Tina was not as clever a scammer as people thought. Her deceit was wrong, but understandable. In 2022, the US-produced film about a girl named Anna was broadcast. Anna came from a working-class background, pretended to be rich, and defrauded tens of thousands of dollars to enjoy a luxurious life, causing the New York High Society to be shaken. Therefore, the media called Tina Anna of Bak John. Tina also confirmed on a live stream that a film producer had approached her to adapt her story for the big screen. At that time, she was considering using the film's income to compensate the victims. Facing the accusations, Tina announced on social media that she would continue to repent for her sins, hoping for forgiveness soon. She stated she would live an honest life from then on and repeatedly affirmed her love for C. However, C believed that exploiting love for fraud was much more serious than many other crimes. In September 2022, Anna of Bak John was sentenced to eight years in prison for abusing trust to appropriate assets and three years for using fake documents of organizations. The total sentence was 11 years in prison. What do you think about today's video? Leave your opinions in the comments section to discuss. And before leaving, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to follow the most classic cases on our channel.